welcome to part three of this series on Jerry Sloan's system with the Utah Jazz. In part one, we covered flex action and Sloan's UCLA series. And in part two, we covered Sloan's low post series, including split action. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the famous Stockton to Malone pick and roll, as well as some of the other pick and roll combinations from the late 90s Utah Jazz. The pick and roll is obviously a play that every basketball team runs, but there were still a few things about the way that Jerry Sloan's team ran pick and roll that put his teams in a better position to score. The first thing that separated the Jazz pick and roll from the pack was how they got into it. They often disguised their pick and roll sets by appearing to be in a different alignment. For example, here we see the Jazz get into their UCLA alignment and Howard Isley will run a UCLA cut down the lane. When he does this, Carl Malone's man has to bump him to make sure he doesn't get a free layup, but while he does that, Malone has already started to get into a pick and roll. So, since Malone's defender is behind on the action, Jeff Hornacek gets a clean look at a pull-up three. Here's one where a cross screen is set, which usually means Carl Malone is going into the low post. But instead of going to the low post, Malone will flow into pick and roll with John Stockton. Now what's interesting here is that Malone's man went under the cross screen, so he is out of position to defend the pick and roll. So Scottie Pippen is forced to switch onto Malone, and when both Scottie Pippen and Ron Harper chase Stockton around the screen, Malone is wide open for a clutch jumper. And here we see a flex screen for Carl Malone, which also means that he will usually go to the low post, but once again he immediately runs pick and roll with Stockton instead. This unpredictability really keeps the defense on their toes and makes them think, which slows them down. So now we've seen pick and rolls come from UCLA cuts, cross screens, and flex screens. So no matter what the Jazz look like they're running, they could be aiming for something entirely different. Another aspect of Jerry Sloan's pick and roll sets was the weak side action. Rather than just having guys space the floor in a stationary position, you would usually see the players on the weak side either setting screens, using the screens, or cutting. You can see how this amount of movement can be impossible to defend if the offense executes correctly. On this play, pay attention to Jeff Hornacek's defender. The Jazz are running pick and roll on the strong side, but on the weak side there is also a set of off-ball screens that Hornacek will use. As he cuts up the floor, his man is hammered by a screen trying to follow him, and instead of continuing his path, Hornacek fades back to the baseline. There is a lot of confusion on the defensive end, and Hornacek gets a wide open jumper. But it wasn't always Hornacek or the guard running off of these off-ball screens. In this example, Brian Russell sets a back screen for Ostertag, so Russell's man has to bump Ostertag to make sure he doesn't cut for a layup or dunk. Since Russell's man is focused on Ostertag temporarily, Russell is free to pop out to the perimeter for a wide open three. In fact, this play was so effective that the Jazz ran it again on the very next play. Speaking of running it again, Jerry Sloan was a big fan of running plays in sequences or running the same play over and over again but using different options each time. Let's take a look at an example of that because it shows how many ways one set can beat the opponent. Here John Stockton runs pick and pop with Greg Foster and the first time the Rockets initially hedge the action but when Stockton steps back just a bit both defenders are caught under the screen and Stockton can fire away. The next time down the floor, the Rockets make sure to fully hedge out on Stockton, but the second duty of a hedging big man is to recover back to his man. So Shannon Anderson's man sinks off of him to plug up the lane for Stockton, and Stockton makes a simple read to get Anderson a wide open three. The next time, Stockton knows that the hedge is coming, 
So he counters that by trying to split the defense. It doesn't really work, but on the weak side, we see Chris Morris curl cut at the perfect time and Stockton finds him for a layup. On the final play of this sequence, the Rockets are less aggressive with their hedge, and after conceding a wide open three to Anderson, his man doesn't sag off of him this time, so Stockton has more time and room to work with as Foster rolls, and Stockton threads the needle so Foster can draw a shooting foul. But what if the defense tried to deny the pick and roll in the first place by icing the screen? Well, Stockton and Malone had plenty of answers for that as well. Here we see Stockton and Malone about to run pick and roll against Pippen and Longley, and Stockton is reading Pippen's movements as he gets into position. And in this moment, you can tell that Pippen is going to lunge out and ice the screen. So Stockton does a crossover to reject the screen and makes a beautiful pocket pass to Malone for a layup. And here, the Jazz aren't even in pick and roll, but Ron Harper is still icing the screen that isn't even there yet because he knows it may come because of what we talked about earlier with cross screens flowing right into pick and roll. So Stockton drives baseline for the easy layup. And here, we see Ron Harper deny the screen, and while Stockton still tries to run off of it and doesn't get separation, Malone simply flips the screen, they run it the other direction, and once again, Stockton makes a pocket pass to Malone for the hammer dunk. So now that you've seen the various ways the Jazz can disguise their pick and roll sets to look like different sets, you've seen the weak side actions they can run, and you've seen what they can do when the screen is denied, you can really get a sense of what made Jerry Sloan a cut above the other coaches. Well, except maybe Phil Jackson. Thanks for watching this series and let me know what you think in the comments.